Hey everybody, welcome back to the Introversion Podcast. Interesting times for me because I'm actually leaving my apartment more often than not these days. I I have moved beyond gym and groceries. Uh, I have made new friends. I went to this libertarian meetup. I went out, drank, partied. Whole new lifestyle. Socializing, meeting new people. And then on this, today is what? What's today? Monday right now I'm recording this. Monday evening. And um, Saturday I spent the day up in New York City. And the funny thing about it is I really didn't tell anybody. I mean, very few amount of people knew that I was going up there. And it was a very strategic mission to just go and with Tommy Danger, spend the day with him. And the the purpose was I scratched one more thing off my bucket list, which was to do an open mic, to do stand-up comedy. Every time I say comedy now, I kind of want to do my little Mark Norman, you know? It's like, yeah, you know, I went up, tell jokes. Mm, Yeah, comedy. But uh, yeah, so I tried my hand at stand-up comedy. It was on my bucket list to do my whole life. And uh, I just, you know, last week I was really busy with a client project, actually. So I was busy with work. I didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare. But I uh, did my best, prepared some material. And literally Friday night, I kind of solidified my five minutes for my set and uh, went up Saturday morning, met up with Tommy. We had brunch. We went to the open mic in the afternoon. Uh, long story short, I did my five minutes. And uh, I feel like I did pretty well with it. I was pleased, you know. And it was interesting because I hadn't been to an open mic since uh, I accompanied my friend Anita, who was starting to get into comedy back in two thousand. I guess it was 2016, right before I left New York. And it was cool. But I was just going and watching other stand-ups and watching my friend perform. But now, obviously, I was more nervous and anxious because I was going to get up on stage and do it myself. And I did it. Wow. That's great. That's really great. Congratulations. Yeah. So I, I, there is video of me doing it that Tommy shot, but I'm actually not going to share that because... I might actually just share a little audio highlight here. So I might throw in a little sample of it here. All right, let's give it up for Jake Haslow. <laughs> I actually really uh, love that name. I, I changed it a few years ago. Um, uh, my old last name was five syllables and it ends in poo. <laughs> so you do the math. Uh-huh. You know. uh, a shout out to my Indian sister from another mister here. <laughs> Another first timer. This is actually my first time doing the stand up. I've been on the club. In the same club. But it's weird though when you uh, you leave religion behind and you start to embrace sexuality. Um, like I don't know where this fits on the LGBTQIA plus spectrum. Um, but as far as my sexual views, I'm against orgasms of any sort. Yeah, I'm anticlimactic. So, But I don't really want to show the video to anybody because when I saw the video, I was like, not ashamed of myself, but I was like, I was way too reliant on my phone. Like I told you, I just kind of decided on my five minutes of material Friday night, which is not nearly enough time to really absorb the material, memorize it. So I was using my phone as a crutch and just the whole time it was just annoying to watch it because... I would look at the audience and then be like, oh, shit, what's my next line in my head? I would freak out a little bit. And then I would just look down at my phone and kind of read it off my phone a little bit. And then I'd kind of want to look back at the audience. And then I'm like, wait, I'm on to the next bit. What's the next bit? And I look back at my phone. So that was really annoying. So if you just listen to the audio, though, it's actually halfway decent, I feel like. you know. And when I compare myself with some of the other comedians who were there, I was like, and they, you know, everybody there, most everybody there has been doing it for a while. So a lot of them had a better delivery and and whatnot. But I was like, you know, for people who've been doing it for a while, some of their material wasn't that great. And I was like, that was my first time. And I felt like, I felt confident in my material, you know? And I also discovered this other podcast. I was listening to it, not podcast, a YouTube channel on 
uh, Saturday morning as I was taking the bus up to New York City. And it was basically this one comedian and this other comedian, and they have a live stream. And basically, it's just like for comedians. And people, you could just type in in the, in the chat your joke, and they'll read through the jokes and kind of critique them. You know, And it was just kind of enjoyable to watch, but I also learned even in a very quick, because I know, I mean, I've been watching stand-up comedy my whole life, so I know it, but it's obviously different when you're on the other side, not just as a consumer, but as a creator. You really need to, like, for all the comedy that I've watched my whole life, for how much I love stand-up comedy as an art form, I have a keen sense, I don't want to brag and say, oh, I have a great sense of humor, but like, I have a good understanding of sort of what's funny, what's not funny. So, I come up with premises all the time, but sometimes I'm as I'm getting started here, I'll I know it's a struggle to get a premise into a joke, you know, into a little stand-up comedy bit. But I'm starting to kind of learn like it's it's funny now that I think about it. It it's actually reminding me of my high school days when I learned to play chess. And there was this one guy, Matt, uh his last name, I'll leave it out. But this is the guy, he was very cocky, very arrogant, this guy I knew in high school in Germany, and he's the one who taught me how to play chess. And the thing is, he beat me, I don't know, God knows how many times he beat me. I don't know, 20 times, 50 times, 100 times, I don't know. 100 billion. And he, he always beat me, and he was a cocky, arrogant guy too, so he was enjoying beating me, I'm sure. But the thing is, like, I didn't mind losing because it was all a learning process for me. I for the first however many 20 30 losses I had I was like I don't even under I don't even know how you could construct a checkmate you know I was just making moves and 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 it reached a certain point you know you you don't know what the hell you're doing you're just making all kinds of bad moves everywhere and then I feel like I graduated onto the next phase which is like just don't make bad moves you know so when you start out learning to play chess you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So it's literally like, just just learn how the game works. Phase two would be like, okay, now that you know how things kind of work, just avoid making bad moves, okay? But obviously that's not going to be enough to get you a win. You know, at a certain point, you need to understand the game well enough to know how to construct a sequence of moves that can actually get you a checkmate. And that was, that bridge to cross over from just not making bad moves to formulating a winning move that took a while like i said maybe 50 100 losses for me to finally get there but once i got there once i actually figured out like oh okay and then i beat him this is the the hilarious part of the story to me especially if you know this guy I have mutual friends who know him, and it's like it's hilarious. But the guy was like the most cocky guy in our, our school, whatever. And he was loving beating me all these times. And then finally, I beat him at his house. And he's like, "Of course." He's like, "That was a fluke. What? What? Was, I don't know what that was. That was a fluke. Let's play again. Let's play again." So we play again, and I literally destroyed him the next game, which of course was just like, "Oh my god!" It felt so amazing, you know. So that's what. Opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Uh, That's why I still remember it, you know, like the back-to-back wins. From my first ever win, which I squeaked by, I got this win somehow. And then the next game, I destroyed him. And I'm pretty sure, however many times we played, it's funny because he hates losing. He likes to win. But after that, I started playing with other chess players in high school as opposed to just him. So he and I didn't play as much after that, but I'm pretty sure every time we played after that, I always beat him. I always had his number. So a very satisfying end to the story, uh, end of that story for me um, to beat the guy, you know, when the pupil, you know, beats the the teacher, you know, it's just like very satisfying. But anyway, I'm, I'm going off about chess here. Um, obviously, let me bring this back to comedy and stand-up comedy, but I'm starting to... Even already in the very early signs, remember Saturday, I just went, this was my first time ever trying to do stand-up comedy. And from watching this YouTube channel on comedy and then breaking down jokes, I was like, oh yeah, okay, okay. So I kind of had a sense of looking at my material and feeling like, yeah, I like it, but I know it's not going to get a laugh. 
So I was kind of kind of reached that point already where I have a good understanding of what at least has the potential to work versus what is definitely not going to get laughs. So I'm at least there, probably just because I'm well-versed and just watching comedy for so many years. But now I kind of started to get a sense from watching that YouTube live stream. And then, of course, going to the open mic, looking at the other comedians, and then doing my own material, getting a few laughs here and there, and looking back on it and realizing where I didn't get the laughs. And I think part of it was my delivery and part of it was... But most of the material I did, like, I feel pretty good about, you know? So now I'm just feeling like my next step is absorb the material, get it in my head, don't rely on my phone. Then I'll have a much more flowing, natural, speaking to the audience vibe, which is if you're going to be a comedian, you're going to get up on stage. Well, you've got to do that. You can't just be up there looking around at your phone because then it's just kind of like you're emitting this vibe of it's the behind the scenes, you know, like the, look at Louis C.K. Look at all these guys like sometimes they uh, this is the beauty of Louis C.K. I feel like is like a lot of times he acts like he's stumbling around his words or just like, oh, this random thought or this or that. But it's like it has to be so planned out by him you know but the genius is that he's making it feel like it's just happening organically you know but i think when the audience doesn't pay attention to the technique or the it's like when you go to watch a a magic show you don't even want to think about the magician like what he's really doing to make it work i mean maybe some people are curious about that but you really just kind of want to be dazzled by like oh wow that was amazing look what he did you know and just enjoy the moment, enjoy the magic. And same thing when you go to a comedy show. You don't want to sit there and deconstruct it all and wonder how he prepared it. And I just want to go there, sit there, and be entertained and laugh, you know? So that's my next step. And I've actually come up with a couple new bits, and I'm starting to get into a flow now. So I think my material has started out in a good place, and I think it's just going to get better and better, and I'm going to improve in my delivery. So... All of this being said, like going back to the whole beginning of the story, like, you know, I went out with my new friend the other night. I got drunk, had a good time on the town. Uh, I can't remember if I talked about that that much here on Introversion. If not, I did talk about it on the curry and kimchi episode uh, of FMAO, which, you know, if you guys, if you're not aware of FMAO yet by now, that's my other show that I do with Tommy Danger. So go to uh, YouTube dot fmao show dot com and uh go subscribe over there because i've obviously been a lot more active over there than here um although there's a lot of things going on in my life now in my personal life where i'm like oh i actually have something to report on other than just stuff happening out there in the world that's impersonal to me now i'm actually meeting people having experiences so Maybe I will start podcasting more here on Introversion soon. So, yeah, not only FMAO show, but here, if you're listening, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button um, and uh, click the like button. You know, it's, it's free. It doesn't hurt your fingers. Just click the like button on this episode. Yeah, all of this stuff is happening right now and lots for me to report on. And it's a lot of interesting, juicy stuff in my life. And it's just like, look, I'm scratching things off my bucket list. You know, I'm like doing some shit, you know, I'm trying some shit. And that's cool. I mean, this is coming from the guy who I, my life has been gymming groceries for the last two years. That's it. You know, I haven't traveled really. I haven't gone out. I haven't dated. I haven't nothing. It's all been me and my apartment watching shows and movies or, you know, griping about politics or, you know, commenting on movies that I've watched and what it made me think and things. It's all introspective in my own head in my apartment. But I'd like to think that we're entering into a new era now of me rejoining life and society, you know. And as much as I've talked about leaving Philly, at least for the moment, I'm starting to rethink that a little bit, you know. Because I don't know, like, I don't necessarily just want to uproot my life here, go down to Florida, start all over again, just for the sake of more political freedom there. When, like I said, at least in the moment right now, I can live a normal life here. Yeah, granted, there's still morons walking around with masks in their car by them or driving around in their cars by themselves. 
that's Philly, you know, that's, you know, the COVID cultists who will never let it go. They still think they're going to die of Wuhan flu. But I feel like at the moment I can work around that, you know, and I can't remember if I mentioned it here on Introversion or FMAO, but the thing I've been realizing lately is like now that I've been back to New York twice in the last month, I'm like, that's a huge perk of living in Philly is that it's an easy day trip to New York and back, you know? So the plus is, it's like, even if Philly isn't all that, even though I am discovering a little bit of, you know, some positive aspects of Philly with this friend who's kind of showing me around Philly and all this stuff. So I'm kind of like, oh, okay, cool, cool. I'll go with that. But me still kind of loving New York, the energy, the vibe, it's like, I can just go up there, you know, just easy peasy. So... Anyway, uh, that was sort of a very extended intro. I'm glad I didn't go off on any Wuhan flu rants too much like I normally do. Um, but let me quickly get into this topic, this subject of reaching out. Because it's a thought I had earlier today, and it's, it's, it has everything to do with being introverted. And because this is the introversion podcast, I'm like, yeah, this is the kind of thing I should totally talk about here. Not just my personal life and what I'm up to, like reporting the way I just did about New York and comedy and all this stuff. That's great. But um, going deeper and truly being introspective on the introversion podcast, it's a little bit related to unrequited love, but basically this idea of reaching out. And I realize. And part of this is just me disclosing, like I do a lot of this, I guess, where I just like on some level, I would like people to know me. And especially since I've been so cooped up the last two years. But really, at the end of the day, what I really desire. What is it that you truly desire? Whether it's with a woman and a romantic relationship or just guy friends or whatever. But it's like I desire intimacy. You know, I desire closeness and openness and for those who have been longtime listeners or those who are new to the introversion podcast, one thing you'll always get is like, look, I'm just going to give you my honest take unfiltered, you know, on my observations, on my experiences, on my insights, perspectives, whatever, uh, politically, socially, personally, whatever. So it's kind of a one way street, though, you know, like I'm taking my very raw truths and putting it out there in the world. And occasionally people comment and chime in and they you know, come back to me with their own take and their own sharing of their experiences. But that is pretty few and far between, you know. But even when that happens, at most, it's a back and forth of like one exchanged message back or forth. Like it doesn't go that much deeper than that. And I'm not counting the conversations I might have with a friend or two here or there uh, about something I bring up on this podcast or not. But like, you know what I mean? Like it, there's a certain, I don't want to say superficiality to it, but it's just like the reality of it is it's not going to go that deep, you know, whether it's people out there listening who I know or they're complete strangers. It's like people just tune in. They listen to me talk, but that's it. It's a one way street. But what I desire, what I yearn for, and I know I'm not necessarily going to get that through this podcast. I need to go out there in the world and find it for myself. And that's kind of the subject matter I'm getting into here is, you know, what I desire at the end of the day is intimacy. It's closeness. It's like, I get you, bro. You know, like, I get it, man. Like, I feel you, you know, I'm with you on this. And not necessarily that me or my friends or lover or whoever, not that we agree on every aspect of everything, but just the fact that you feel like you're being listened to and whether somebody agrees with you or not, they at least have received your message, you know, like you, they've heard you say what you have to say. They don't hate you for it. They don't run away because of it, but they're like, oh, okay, cool. It's almost like you hear what I'm saying. You now understand me better. And that's a cool thing, right? And ideally, if you're a friend or somebody out there, you would also express yourself to me and I would listen and better understand you. This is like, I'm breaking it down, but this is what friendships are, relationships are. This is what intimacy is. And unfortunately, I feel like, and I, I know this is not just my problem, my issue, but I feel like we live in a society 
for a while. And I used to live in New York, very busy life in the 2000s and early 2010s. Like, Life is pretty stupid, with lots of hubbub to keep you busy, but really not amounting to much. Where everybody's just busy with their own life. Everybody has their career, and they're out making their own things happen, their own dating life, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. And then as I got older, into my late 30s and now 40s, like, yeah, you know, people have settled down, they have their kids. So I get it. Everybody, for a while now, they have their own thing. And the older that I get, the older that we get, everybody's social circle starts to dwindle. I get it. Like, this is just, I'm just stating facts. These are just realities of the way things go. But it, it doesn't mean the desire that I have or that other people might have to, for a closeness. It doesn't mean that just goes away. You know, like I've been talking about MGTOW principles here the last couple of weeks, especially. And it's like, okay, you can go MGTOW, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're not attracted to women anymore physically. It doesn't mean that you don't still want to be intimate with a girl and like get it on or whatever. Like, no, that's still there. But you've accepted a bigger picture where, and everything comes with trade offs, of course. Everything in life is trade offs. But you've started with, I'm spot, talking specifically about the MGTOW thing, but like the juice isn't worth the squeeze, right? So you started to realize like, okay, I'm not going to lower my standards just for the sake of getting some punani. But like if the right girl comes along in the right situation, then cool, I'll go with it. You know, I'm not going to make any hard, fast rules like no women, no, 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 whatsoever. You know, I, I want to, no matter what the situation is, like me going to an open mic, me going to New York, me going to this Halloween party in a couple of weeks, me going out drinking, having seven drinks last week with my new friend. It's like, these are all things that I'm open to and, and some things I'm overdoing it, some things I'm, but I don't have regrets really. I mean, as long as I don't do any permanent damage to my body, as long as I don't do anything completely stupid, but I'm living life and uh, doing some shit and that's cool, you know? But anyway, let me bring this back to, uh, at the end of the day though, like I just want to grow closer with people. And as an introvert, it doesn't have to be 8 million people, you know? And, you know, I say that like, yeah, I know introversion in the podcast, is, this isn't going to have a million followers. I get it. Cause people, people have a TikTok attention span and I'm sitting here trying to go deep on life and reveal the inner int intricacies of my mind and my soul. People don't have time for that. People don't have interest in that. I get it. But here I am still. So, you know, and, it, it, and dude, it's like, let me, along the lines of reaching out, like, it, it is disheartening, even though I say that, it is disheartening where I was like, I had 133 subscribers on the YouTube channel here for introversion. And then I went up to 134 and I was like, okay, cool. And then I checked again today and it's like, oh, it's back down to 133. And granted, it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but you know what I'm saying. It's like, it's still, when you have a few subscribers and you're building up and you're growing, when you lose one, when your number goes down, it's like, it's just obviously just heading in the wrong direction, you know? Like you want to just be growing your audience and connecting with more people and getting the word out there and really just spreading however you can, you know, your, whether it's your message or your social network. Like you just want to fill your life with new people who are interested in you, you know, and what you have to say. And you want that to be expanding. You don't want it to be contracting. So... I don't want to go on any further about that, particularly with the subscriber count. But again, if you're listening and you listen regularly and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It's free. And it would you know, make me feel a little bit better today. So that'd be cool. Plus, you'll get notified. You know, hit subscribe and click the bell and you'll get notified when a new episode gets posted. So it's win, 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 and it's free. So anyway, but let me, again, keep, I got to bring it back to this point of reaching out. And as an introvert, I think this is pretty common for INTJs, INFJs, and introverts in general, is it takes a lot out of us, it takes a lot out of me to reach out to people in, in, in any kind of context or situation. For example, 
I would rather sit here and just put my head down and work on a client project. Even if I don't love the work, I'd rather sit here for seven hours working on a boring ass client project because I'm just in my zone alone, working on my thing, getting something accomplished. I would rather do that than spend an hour doing cold call emails or reaching out to people, email, text, whatever, to try to inquire about new work or a new project or, you know, and as a freelancer, as an independent contractor, it comes with the territory, of course. And I did get better at it in New York, but it doesn't change the fact that deep down internally, it takes a lot more out of me to have to always be reaching out to people for any reason. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I kind of like this whole like automation of with Uber drivers and food deliveries. And you know, there are some upsides of this whole 2020 you know, pandemic thing where I'm like, yeah, society's become more digital in a way and more separated and isolated and oh, overdone. It's been overdone, which is another reason why I feel like we have such an unhealthy society. I'll admit that. But the fact that you get to work from home now, it's become more normal. And there's a lot of things that suit me well in that regard as an introvert. You know, I can benefit from that. But but back to my point here, you see what I'm saying? Like, it takes a lot more out of me just to reach out to people. And I think when you get to the crux of it, it comes back to what I was saying earlier about how, you know, let's take like messaging back and forth with somebody, whether it's Facebook Messenger, Instagram, a DMing or emails, texting, whatever mode that you're going back and forth with somebody, a friend, a new person, a, lo- a, a potential date you know, coworker, work opportunity, whatever the case. But the point is you send them a message and then you got to wait for them to reply. And this is all normal. And the way I've learned to be better at this over the years is, okay, fine, send a message, the message you want to send or reach out to two or three or four people at the same time and then busy yourself with six other things that you're working on. And then, oh, okay, whenever that person finally gets one of the four people you message, whenever they finally message you back, if they message you back at all, you're like, okay, cool, cool, cool. You don't come across as needy because you won't message them back right away. Let's let's say you send person A a message. You send person A, B, C, and D a message. And then four hours later, person C writes you back. Well, if you're so busy in your five other things that you're working on, you're not going to probably immediately message person C back right away because that kind of gives off this vibe. And I don't care whether you're a guy or a girl, whatever, but like in general, it gives off the vibe that you are extremely available, extremely reliable. I mean, there's a positive spin to it too, but the way I feel like things go in this world these days is People look down on it in a way, whether they realize it or not. It might be a subconscious thing, but I think people are like, oh, this guy, he's always like a like a needy little puppy dog, just will always message you back right away. They're, it's like they're sitting there waiting. It's like, I don't want to say it's pathetic, but I, I just get this impression that you're better off having a safer reply time, and especially if it's not like a longtime friend, but it's somebody new who you just met or a potential romantic thing or whatever. Like you, you know, so I'm, you know what I mean though, when I'm saying all this, like you just don't want to be so eagerly available immediately. You know, you want to give off the air of you got your own life going on. You're busy with a million things. So anyway, some of this might be more in my head, but I think what I'm speaking about is the truth for everybody. On some level, this is happening, you know, but when I talk about my energy as an introvert, The struggle for me a lot of times is like reaching out in the first place. For example, I'll be I'll be honest here. So I mentioned my friend Anita, and uh, I haven't talked to her in a long time, probably since twenty seventeen, maybe. And um, I don't even know if she's still living in the New York area or if she's moved somewhere. I have no idea. And like I said earlier, uh, I went to open mics with her back in 2016 when she was trying to be a comic. So I was like supporting her and I went to open mics and it was a good time. 
But I now that I've been to an open mic myself, I kind of want to reach out to her and say, hey, how are you? Where are you? What's going on in life? Like, by the way, I just went and did my first open mic, blah, blah, blah. Are you still doing open mics? Are you still into comedy, blah, blah, blah? And just kind of rekindle that friendship, get back in touch. And then there was this other girl, too, who I met through her who was there. And I'm like, her and I actually had both never done stand-up, but we liked the open mic thing, and we were supporting Anita. And we became friends, but we didn't really know each other, more like Facebook friends. And we've fallen out of touch. Last I saw, she was living in L.A., I don't know. But but her and I actually, not that we kind of pinky swore on it, but we were like, hey, let's do an open mic together. Like, the, let's both sort of br- pop our cherry together and be comedy virgins and do a stand-up thing together. But we've fallen out of touch now. I haven't done it all this time. I doubt that she's done it, but now I finally did. So now I feel like reaching out to her also, getting back in touch, you know, just doing that, right? But I'm kind of a procrastinator, as many people are. But I realize the thing is, is like like the example I gave earlier, like I'd rather sit here and record this podcast and edit the footage and work on FMAO and work on new stand-up material and do all of these things that are basically projects and activities done by myself where I'm just in my zone doing my introverted creative thing. I would much rather do that than reaching out to this one friend and the other friend to try to rekindle something there because, you know, and I'll give an example. There's somebody else who I mentioned I met uh, when I went up to New York last month and her and I, we had a great lunch, and that was great. And uh, we exchanged numbers, and I texted her uh, a couple weeks ago that I was going to be coming up to New York again. And I said, hey, do you want to be on the FMAO show uh, with Tommy and me? We'd love to have you on. And never heard back from her. Never heard back. And look, I get it. You just have to let constantly let go of all of these opportunities, you know, you have to have a very thin skin about all this. And this is kind of the crux of what I'm getting at here, though, is like, it's as an introvert, that doesn't come to you naturally. Because what you really when you meet somebody interesting, when you meet somebody who's thoughtful, when you meet somebody who's like quality, and you're like, cool, I like this person. As a person, I'm glad to be having more people like this in my life. And they sound like, with their words, they're like, yeah, it was great to meet you. You're great. This was a great time, blah, blah, blah. That's the words. But then when you just send them a text, like, hey, and not right away. This was like a couple weeks later. I texted and I'm like, hey, I'm coming up in a couple weeks. You're going to be around. We could record an interview or something. And then you don't hear back. So, and again, this is where I'm kind of like the idea of persistence, you know, like, I don't want to be the kind of person who's ever... I mean, obviously, I might have mentioned on here before, but I'm at this point in my life, I'm not persistent at all. And I, and I mean that in terms of being a guy pursuing women romantically, which I don't even do that anymore, to start out with. So being persistent in your pursuit, I'm like, how can I be persistent in my pursuit when I'm not even pursuing women in the first place? So, But even other opportunities with work or creative opportunities or collaboration opportunities or new friends or whatever, like I'm just not persistent. And whatever a little ounce of persistence I might have had years ago, now I'm just like, you know, maybe because I'm old and a little bit jaded, I'm just like, eh. If I reach out to somebody and they don't reach back, I'm like, okay, whatever. But you know what I'm saying? Like when something like that happens, it it makes me... And I know somehow I need to just scratch that from my memory and just be like, oh, no, whatever, put it behind you. New people now, other people, move forward, have a very short memory, reach out. Reach out to persons B, C, D, and E. Forget about person A, move on. You know, it's like kind of like a numbers game, but I understand in theory you need to be that way, you know, in order to have people in your life, you know, especially when you're in this isolated mode of life that I am in a city like Philadelphia, where I don't know that many people. And, you know, in my forties now, and everybody's politically on the other side of wherever I am and, or they're all, you know, Wuhan flu cult people or whatever. 
I'm like, yeah. Or they're married with kids now. There's just a lot of reasons, not just with me, but with other people, where pe- it, the circumstances have taken people and mass out of my life. So as I move forward, it's like I have to try to reach out to forge new connections. At the same time, I have a very short threshold for sort of tolerating apathy or indifference on the other party's part. You know what I'm saying? So the basically my lack of persistence. So yeah, I've kind of spelled it out here. So I've basically said what I desire is intimacy and closeness, but the path to getting there, it kind of has to start with me reaching out, but I don't enjoy reaching out because of the reality that people don't reach back or they do for a second and then I want to continue the conversation and then it goes nowhere. So, and I could give examples across the board, but I'm not going to get all into this and lengthen this out, but you know what I'm saying. This is a general theme, a general trend, and not even in the last couple of years. It's been like this for a while, if I'm being honest, but it's probably just more noticeable now uh, with my life and being so much more isolated post pandemic. But yeah, so that was one of a few things on my mind. So I'm going to wrap it up with that just for this topical, you know, episode on reaching out. Um, feel free to comment if on, on YouTube, if you have any thoughts about your own frustrations with reaching out to people or in any context, you know, like if you comment on this video, do you have an expectation that I would reply to your comment? And if by chance I don't reply, like, would you be upset or deflated by that? Or not just this channel, but in general, like, do what are you doing out there on YouTube and social media? Are you looking to meet new people, make deeper, well, I don't want to say deeper connections with people you already know, but, but reaching out to new people, you know, on Twitter or wherever, like, are you, I don't know, you know, and I know I'm just speaking into the void here. I don't know exactly who's listening and what's going on in your life. But I'll, real quick, I'll just throw in another friend who reached out to me a few weeks ago and he asked me about something I could help him with, give him some advice about his kids with something I specifically know about. And I took the time out of my day, wrote him a nice little spiel, uh, you know, advising him about this situation, giving him some advice that could help with his kids or whatever. And um, didn't hear back from him. Not even like a like on my reply. Not even, and this is just texting, not social media, just texting. And didn't say thank you. Like, hey, thanks. Thanks for the advice. That was good. Or thanks for the tips or anything. Nothing. Just didn't reply at all. And then a week or two later, I get a message from him out of the blue. And he was listening to Radiohead the Benz. And, uh, he was like, Hey, just reminiscing. Like I, I thought of you, I think of you anytime I hear the Benz and I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know? Um, and I almost, I literally drafted up a text reply today and I was going to say, Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. That's probably the best album. That's probably like if I was on a deserted Island, that would be my one album, and I'm glad that when people think of Radiohead, the Benz, they think of me. I thought, that's cool. And I was gonna, I was about to text him back a little bit of that and say like, yeah, you know, when I hear Dave Matthews, man, I think of you, man, and blah blah blah. But like, but I didn't. I didn't reach back out. I deleted the message that I was about to send. And another thing I was going to say is, I specifically messaged him about one introversion podcast episode back in 2020. It was the one called The Last Dance. Which I was actually listening to it when I was falling asleep the other night. And I was like, that's a really good episode. Again, I'm not, I don't mean to brag when I say that, but I'm just saying when I listened to it, I was like, sometimes I think the earlier episodes I did in 2020, I was like, there was some good shit I said that year. Not to mention the predictions I made about the 
the jab mandates and the Biden administration, all this stuff that would happen in 2021. And it did. I was like, I called all of that in 2020. But anyway, you know, it was a very, I got emotional when I recorded that episode because I was thinking back to that time in my life and with him, with this friend in particular and his mom who died later. And I got emotional thinking about her because she was a great lady. She was kind of like a mom to me away from home. Like, so I wanted him to hear that and I wanted to talk with it. I thought it would be great for him to hear it just to know that like I was thinking about his mom and remembering that time and all that stuff. So, so I specifically messaged him about that episode and I was like, Hey man, give it a listen. I'll be curious to hear your thoughts after you listen to it. Never heard back from him about it. And I can only assume he never listened to it. You know, I think the better option would be that he just didn't listen to it. I think the worst thing would be if he did listen to it and didn't even say anything to me about it. That would be kind of weird. So anyway, I don't mean to go off about this one particular friend. Like we've been through some rocky stuff in the past, but now I'm like, I don't have any ill will toward him. But at the same time, I'm like, what is this arbitrary connection, you know, where I reach out and I might not ever hear back, or he reaches out to me, and I'm just supposed to cater to him and respond immediately and help him out, and he doesn't even say thank you. And then randomly out of the blue, he says he's thinking about me. I'm like, what is this? And what? What is this? And, like, I don't want to say, like, playing games or whatever, because I know it's not, like, intentional necessarily, but I'm like, yeah, I know he's busy, married, kids, job, and I'm busy with my own thing. We're all busy. We're all busy. Do you have any idea how fucking busy I am? Everybody's busy. But I, the way I look at it, it's not an excuse, you know? Like, maybe that's just the way I was raised. And, like, you know, at this point in my life, like, my mom, my mom is too nice. My mom is too good. She has too much integrity. And that's how I was raised. So I'm just very diligent and I follow through. And when people text me in general, I text them back right away or like I, I will get back to them or, you know, but it also has to depend on the nature of the relationship too. Like there can't be any of this other baggage going on or some other reasons. But like when I have a good, healthy friendship relationship with a person, I follow up, you know, because I care about them. And I also care about the friendship. I care about the relationship. You know, how many people record a podcast a specific podcast reflecting and getting emotional about something 20 years ago. And they want to share that with the friend. You message the friend and they don't even listen to it. They don't even comment back on it. I'm like, again, it's like a one way street, you know? And again, I don't want to make this all about this one friend because it's not just about him. It's about this kind of thing happening all the time. And again, as an introvert, it just, it just leaves me feeling like, I don't even want to bother reaching out to people. Don't bother. And I say it, and MGTOW guys say it all the time with trying to pursue a woman and dating and marriage relationships, but like the juice isn't worth the squeeze. That term is used a lot in that context, but I'm kind of talking about it here across the board. Like the juice isn't worth the squeeze, you know, like on top of just being an introvert in general, I feel like in 2020 and 2021, like I've just gotten so used to living my isolated life. And I've found a certain inner fortitude where I'm like, fuck it. I would just, I'll rather use all my energy, just creating content and getting better with drawing and video editing and animating and making cool shit And reaching my potential that way creatively, like at this point in my life, like I feel like kind of cool just going down that path and not having regrets about it. Like when I'm on my deathbed in the future, I'm like, well, I love learning to play guitar and make music and all the videos I made, all the podcasts I made. And, you know, I probably won't have children. So, you know, for the introversion podcast to be left behind as my legacy and whoever wants to listen to it like 20 years after I'm dead and maybe it, you know, strikes a chord or whatever. I don't know. When you think of it that way, it's like, it doesn't really matter. What do I care? Like I'm dead at that point, but (laughs) that's a whole nother topic for another day to talk about legacy and what really matters or does anything really matter? I don't know. 
But before I go rambling off on that, um, I know I got a little bit passionate there all of a sudden, uh, bringing up this one specific example. But I'm glad at least it's on point. It's on topic here with the whole reach out thing. Uh, So anyway, yeah, I've said plenty on the subject, um, reaching out. I probably am still going to reach out to the two friends who I mentioned about the open mic thing. Hopefully at least one of them replies, maybe both of them, but maybe neither of them replies. And obviously I need to be okay with that and just keep moving forward, doing my own thing. So uh, we'll see what happens. And maybe in the next episode, I'll report back and just uh, let y'all know like, oh, this person did reach back and now we're back in touch and it's wonderful. And we're going to go to an open mic in New York next time I go to visit. That would be cool. But yeah, uh, that's it. That's it for now. That's it for today. All right, see you later. I hope this has been enlightening for you. Hey, glad you're here. If you've enjoyed any aspect of today's episode, I ask that you click like on this video. And if you'd like to see more in the future, hit that big, fat, juicy red subscribe button and click the little bell icon next to it in order to receive a notification as soon as new episodes are posted. And if you're not actually on YouTube right now, but are watching on Spotify or listening on Apple, please leave a five-star rating. It only takes a second, and it's a free way of supporting this podcast. If you'd like to get in touch, there are plenty of ways to do so. You can post a comment on this video on YouTube. You can email me at podcast at introversion.com. Or you can connect on social media. I'm fairly active on Twitter and Instagram as I am introversion. And last, but certainly not least, be sure to check out the brand new and ever-evolving introversion.com, where in addition to the podcast episodes, I am posting all kinds of interestingness and food for thought on a nearly daily basis. So yeah, take a break from Mark Zuckerberg's watchful eye and go actually bookmark an independent website like back in the day. Before the dark times, before the empire. It's a harsh world out there, but keep calm and carry on, my friend. I will always be here at introversion.com, actively introspecting in order to live my best life and encouraging you and others to do so as well. Until next time. All done. If you survive, please come again. (laughs) 